Once upon a time, Nintendo <laughs> made this hunk of plastic, which some of us called a Wii U. It's been a little while since I sat down with the Wii U and I talked to you guys about some of the fantastic games that this thing had. We have talked about this so many times, the fact that the Wii U was underrated, that it had so many fun games, a huge expansive library of just overlooked games because no one had the damn system. But in that, I found myself talking about a lot of the same games. A lot of the ones that, as Wii U collectors, we all knew were amazing and we were just trying to convince people to play them. But there are actually a lot of other games that I love for this system that I've never really had a chance to talk about. So, here is 10 games worth buying for the Wii U that I've never had the chance to talk about, which I'm not gonna put in the title because that'd be too long. Just gonna put this big hunk of plastic down right here. Now in almost every video I've ever done about the Wii U, I've never mentioned this game and in every single comment section of every Wii U video I've ever done, People keep asking me if I've played this game. Yeah, I have. That's why it's been on my shelf for a while. I've played Toad Treasure Tracker. It's fun. So let's talk about it. The design in this game is on point. It reminds me of Fez in a way. If Fez was more of a 3D platformer and better. I liked Fez, but... I like this more. I am biased though, so take that with a pinch of salt. It is set in the Super Mario universe, but does a great job at taking away a lot of what feels commonplace in Mario games these days. There are so many interesting puzzles in this game. It has 3D style levels that are on these floating platforms in the middle of nowhere up in the sky, and you use rotating the camera and traversing these weird sort of uh, what was that guy's name? What was that guy's? That was so stupid. Uh, what was that guy's name? This is this is dumb. MC MC Hammer Time, Escher something that made those really trippy sort of like paintings and pictures that blend. I'm not doing myself any favors right now. I'm just gonna put pictures on the screen of what I mean, and that's what this game kind of reminds me of in its design. It's only about a six hour game, but you can pick it up pretty cheap. In fact, I bought this uh, double pack with the Amiibo for like 20 bucks, I think maybe like six months ago. But the game never gets old. In its six hours, it keeps things fresh. Every level is different, all the puzzles are different. It's not a hard game, but if you wanna try and find all the secrets and hidden areas, that's where the challenge will be. It's a very clever game and it hides everything behind the level design. You're your own enemy when it comes to finding things because you really have to look and move the camera around and <clears throat> yeah, it's fun. For every comment I've received over the last two years, it's fun. Has it, has it even been out too? It has to be, I'm getting old. <clears throat> Here's something you won't see me do often. Talk about Minecraft. <laughs> and it's not because I don't like the game, Okay, it is. It, that is why I don't like the game. It's never really been for me. I can totally see why people get addicted to it, but I'm definitely more of a linear, not linear, but like story 12 hour, 15 hour game, and I'm out. I love RPGs even, but damn do I get bored of trying to play the same game. I have so much to play. That's my excuse for not liking Minecraft. Ever to play Minecraft, if there was ever a console to play it on and you are a Nintendo fan, I recommend picking it up on the Wii U. I had the pleasure of going to Nintendo's headquarters in Seattle and playing this game before it came out, which is one of the coolest experiences I've honestly had as a YouTuber and as a video gamer. I was stood this close from Reggie's office and I wish I could have gone in and seen him, but I guess his body wasn't ready for me. The reason why I'd recommend it though is because it has this whole Mario world built in Minecraft and it was huge. I played a few hours of it while I was there and it's seriously super expansive. And if you like Minecraft and you like Mario, they did such a good job. I was actually having fun playing Minecraft, exploring this Super Mario world. It is crazy what they build and then what you can go in and build and I do actually recommend for the first time ever playing Minecraft. Don't take that the wrong way. Not every game's for everyone, but th that was actually fun. The only other time I've ever talked about this game on my channel was when I was talking about the fact that I wanted it, that the fact that I wanted the double pack with the first one in it and I could never actually find it, but I've never really reviewed this game and even though these are like short little mini spoken reviews and not that super in depth I wanted to take a chance to talk about Bayonetta 2 and really dive into my love for the series just even if it's brief 
This is an action-packed game that plays and looks, in my opinion, better than Bayonetta 1. I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion, but this game took everything that made that first game great and just built on it and made a more enjoyable experience. I loved the first one, by the way. It has about 10 hours of gameplay that will have you engrossed the entire game. The game flows so well, and not only because it's 60 FPS, but also the gameplay, the combat all flows together so well. Between dodging and using witch time to sort of slow down time and do your combos and then the climaxes at the end where like it's an all out hair whipping demon killing phenomenon, phenomenon, phenomenon. This, this is the second video in a row I've just tried recording where I couldn't pronounce a word. When it comes to combat, is what, essentially what I'm saying is that you have so many options open to you, available to you, and you don't feel like you're super overpowered in this game with all of these options in your repertoire, you would think, well, it, maybe it's easy. No, it's, it's still a challenge, which is why when you tackle these hard enemies and you throw all these combos together, you throw all these moves, you throw all these unlockable weapons that you buy along the way, and you unlock along the way and you string it all together and then you win. You, it's so rewarding and it feels great and it's seriously just fun. Next we have one of the most unpopular opinions I think I've ever had. I, I'm usually pretty on ball with popular opinion. There's a few games here and there that I hate that people love and I love that people hate and I guess this is one of them. But I really enjoyed Zombie U. This game was a launch title made by Ubisoft and it used the pad so much constantly but they did a great job of it. At least for me, I actually felt like in the situations they made me use the pad, it actually brought me further into the game. Which which didn't happen with any other game I played on the Wii U. The only time it didn't bring me into the game was when I had to use the sniper rifle and I had to put it up to the screen to do that. Kind of cool, but stupid and gimmicky and I didn't like it. But when it came to running down a hallway with zombies chasing you and you really want to get into that next room and you have to go to the pad and try and put in the key pin to the door and you're getting it wrong and you can look back up at the screen which is almost like looking behind you and you can see the zombies running at you. It's, it almost felt like you were actually there doing these things. You start with one survivor and if he dies you, have, you can get a new survivor and then you can go and try and kill the old zombie you and get your stuff back. The old zombie you. I never drew that correlation before. The fun in it for me is restarting a new game, maybe on nightmare mode, and trying to play it through with one character. Let me know if you ever managed that, fans of this game, because I still have your not yet done it. Another game I've never talked about, because I think it was the last game I picked up for my Wii U library, and that was about maybe six months ago now, and that's Wonderful 101. This is actually really fun. If you like Power Rangers style everything mixed with Pikmin style gameplay, this is the game for you. And yeah, that's a weird mix. And if you also like super weird things, this might also be the game for you. You go along the game completely confused because the story makes zero sense, but that doesn't matter. It's not about that. This is just ignore the story. It's there, but it's weird. Gathering up citizens and saving them. And then once you have your little group of citizens, you turn them into bridges and weapons and whatever else you need them to do for you. It's really interesting and it's really weird. You use the gamepad again to do make a lot of the shapes to form these things. It does kind of get annoying sometimes when you try and do a shape and it does a different shape. It works most of the time. It's unique and it's definitely fun. It's kind of a difficult game. Actually, it has a steep learning curve at the start and then you kind of get good at it and then it gets more and more difficult as the game goes on. But if you stick with it and you get through the amazing intense boss battles that are super weird, just like Pikmin 3, again, has some really cool boss battles that are worth plugging along through the game. You seriously need to stick with it at the start. If you can stick with it through the first like three-ish hours and get used to the game, you will have a lot of fun in it after that. It's, I want to say it's underrated, but a lot of people are talking about it more and more these days. I think it's getting expensive. I think. So if you find it cheap, pick it up. I managed to find it cheap. There's a video about Paper Mario Color Splash on my channel and if I think it's worth it. I just want to talk about it one more time because that video didn't exactly get a ton of views and it was a while ago. And in the hopes that this video gets more views than that one, I still want to recommend this game to as many people as possible. I know Paper Mario has changed over the years. I know it's not the same as Thousand Year Door. Don't want to give it a shot or you just not for you because it's not the same. I enjoyed playing this game so much and if you're a fan of Nintendo or fan of the previous Paper Marios and you're for whatever reason not picking this up, I feel bad for you because it really was fun. Exploring the world, unlocking more levels, 
painting everything in sight, un unlocking things, solving the puzzles, solving the challenges. It, I, so solving a lot of the challenges in this game threw me back to old school point and click days where I needed to, to take the rubber chicken in Mon Mon Monkey Island over here and do this thing with a sponge. And it's very similar to this. The gameplay when it comes to the battle mechanic is way too drawn out and does get really cumbersome. And by the end, you'll just be skipping battles and you don't need to battle, which kind of makes it pointless nearer to the end you will just kind of I feel like you might probably have been like me just give up on it but the gameplay around that the exploring in the world is is addictive and fun I keep wanting to explore there are so many different areas in this game there's desert levels forest levels water levels I'm trying to remember all the levels fire levels it just kept going on and on pirate ship levels I kept wondering when the level variation was going to end and it almost never seemed to by far my favorite thing in this game is the writing and the dialogue and the inner interactions the characters have. The paint bucket and his sense of humor was one of the most hilarious games that I've played in recent years when it comes to Nintendo. Whoever wrote this game and came up with the dialogue, came up with the jokes, 10 out of 10 for that because it seriously was worth playing the game just to get more and more of the dialogue out of the NPCs and out of the main cast and it was just a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it and I still recommend it. It took, it was like 40 hours too so pick it up. I, I don't know what this is trending at price-wise. With it being one of the latest releases on the Wii U and have it being a Paper Mario game, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets expensive one day if it's not already. Um, I've lost my Darksiders. <clears throat> Maybe I sold it. I don't think I did. I had Darksiders too. I don't know where I want it, where I put it. I don't know where I put it. Well, Darksiders 2, I want to put this on this list because it's been a while since I've seen anyone really talk about it. And on the Wii U is definitely the way to play this game. For those of you that have just got into Zelda maybe with Breath of the Wild, this is a really fun Zelda-ish like game. And on the Wii U, it has all the unlockable content. It has uh, better frame rates, I believe, and it just runs better in general. A lot of the bugs and issues that the game had initially were fixed for the Wii U, which was nice to have a definitive version of something on the Wii U. That's always a plus in the Wii U's favor. This game has great combat. It's really fun. It's really like you ride around on your horse and you beat up enemies and you go to dungeons and you do puzzles and you get keys and you unlock doors. If you've played Zelda, this might seem kind of similar. I also remember it having a really cool soundtrack and it took me a while to finish it too. It was like a 30 hour long game. If you haven't played the game, you should really try it. It's been a while. I bought that on launch with the system. It's been a long time since I played that game and maybe I should have revisited it before doing this uh, little mini review of it. But I remember having a lot of fun with that game. Next we have the NES remixes one and two, specifically two, I preferred two. In the second one, you have a really great roster of games. It was better than the first one, in my opinion, for the roster of games. Super Mario Brothers 3, Dr. Mario, Super Mario Brothers 2, Punch-Out, Zelda, all the games that are featured have these short, fun, challenges in the game these little mini challenges like yeah, you need to do a certain thing within a certain time limit they're all really fun and really addictive but where it starts to get really fun is it mixes the games together like you'll you'll play as link in mario brothers or you'll play as toad in kirby or the challenges you'll do in your own worlds will have added challenges from outside it's just really it's a really nice fresh mix up of these older games if you're like me and you're a retro gamer and you love playing the old nes games maybe you want to play them but a little different. Fatal Frame. I have to put this on the list because I know there'll be a bunch of people that will comment about it if I don't. It's a game that I still need to pick up physical and add to my collection because I believe it only had a physical release in Japan. This game is terrifying. I'm a little baby when it comes to scary games, but this game scares the crap out of me. In this really slow gameplay, it's not fast and action packed and in your face and jump scares everywhere you turn. It's really slow and that builds up the tension and builds up the creepiness so much more. And the ghosts in this game, they're just terrifying. I don't like scary games. I don't play that many of them. PT Demo had me shaking in my damn boots. I played that game three times over because I loved it, but the first two I played pretty much with my hands over my eyes because I just couldn't handle it. You use your Wii U pad as your weapon, it's your camera, it's your spirit camera, and you hold it up and you try and keep 
the ghosts in the fa frame for as long as possible to do fatal damage, like fatal frame, right? Get it? Something that's really cool about the game is there's barely any loading screens, like barely any at all, which is great for not taking you out of the experience and having that creepy feeling linger for as long as possible. The puzzles can get kind of challenging, but overall, an enjoyable game that I highly recommend. Next, we have Tokyo Mirage Sessions. This game is a blend of Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei. It's a silly 60 hour game that is just a lot of flashy lights, music, over the top animations, super fun turn-based game. It's really stylish and when you get good at the game, it becomes even more fun to play. But it's a great game, it really is. So once again, I wanted to keep this video to games that I hadn't talked about before, maybe some that might be hidden gems to those of you out there. And I wanted to leave a lot of the ones that I go on and on about, like Pikmin 3, Mario Maker, Donkey Kong, games like that that are fantastic and of course they're worth it. I wanted to keep it more to these sort of secluded gems. That's what I should start, secluded gems. But as always, I am sure there are games that I missed and I am sure you'll let me know down below. So please do, I'd love to hear it. Hit like on this video, remember to be subscribed because we become best friends. I will see you guys in the next video, which as you know, as you know, <laughs> will be very soon. Ugh, I just recorded the Vita video and my throat is, I was gonna do another one, but I think I might be tapped out. It hurts.